Hey everyone, my presentation this week is on poison sumac. It's known by the scientific name Toxicodendron vernix, and this was NJ pine barren species number five. All right, let's start with the description of this plant. This is probably one of the more important plants to be able to identify out in the field. It's a small shrub or tree that grows up to nine meters tall. It's like 30 feet. It's deciduous and woody. It has long, smooth, uh, oval to oblong leaves that are five to 10 centimeters long. They have smooth margins and accumulate tips, meaning they end at a point. The leaves hold seven to 13 leaflet pairs. You can see that in the picture here with a single leaflet at the top. The stems are reddish on the leaflets and the leaves are bright orange in the spring. They turn a glossy green in summer and they're red orange in the fall. The stems are distinctly reddish and they have small sort of like palish yellow or green subglobose, which means not fully circular or spherical flowers. They have a gray bark with long thin sagging branches and the fruits are loose whitish berry like clusters. Poison sumac is found in the eastern United States and the extreme southeast of Canada. It only grows in muddy very waterlogged soils that a lot of other tree species can't really survive in. Uh, mostly in swamps and peatlands obviously but also in pine wood and hardwood forests. And it's not heavily shade tolerant, so you'll find it in sandy thickets and open areas of these habitats. So poison sumac's main claim to fame, if you will, is its toxicity. It contains a resinous oil called urishiol. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's the same compound found in poison ivy and in poison oak, which are relatives to it, but it's more toxic in poison sumac. All parts of the poison sumac plant, so its leaves, stems, flowers, I should have roots in there, and its fruits contain oil. Uh, the plant remains toxic even after dying, so if, let's say, a leaf fell off the tree and you happen to pick that leaf up, you may develop an allergic reaction. Uh, it's been described as intense and obviously extremely painful. Here's some graphic images that show some people who were unfortunate enough to develop poison sumac infections. They form 12 to 72 hours after being exposed to the plant and some of the symptoms are itchiness, burning, redness, swelling, and blisters. It could actually even kill you if you burn the plant and you inhale the smoke from it through the development of what's called a pulmonary edema, which is when fluid enters your lungs and it may require steroids to properly and fully treat. So for these reasons, you obviously want to avoid contact with poison sumac altogether. Part of that is being able to recognize it. You should wear long sleeves and pants, even hats, when you're hiking in swampy areas that have poison sumac. Um, but if you are unfortunate enough to have touched it, or even if your pet, God forbid, came into contact with it, you're going to want to remove your clothes as soon as possible. Wash your exposed skin with soap and cold water. It's important to use cold water because when you use hot water, it opens your pores up more and can actually spread the oils through your skin. And if you have a rash and it develops, some common treatments are calamine lotion or some hydrocortisone topical cream, some antihistamines if you're very itchy. Oatmeal baths are an old folk remedy. Um, but you're going to want to seek medical attention if the rash is on your face or your genitalia, if it covers like a big part of your body, or if it doesn't go away after like one to two weeks. Obviously, you don't want to burn this plant. Do not burn this plant. So now that we're all scared of poison sumac, um, maybe we should know that it can be easily confused with a few other sumac species. Uh notably staghorn sumac. So both are sumacs, and until recently, both were in the Rus genus, which has cashew trees and mango trees. Um, poison sumac was recently reclassified under the genus Toxicodendron, which is shared with its relatives, poison ivy and poison oak. So poison sumac and staghorn sumac are pretty similar in appearance, but there are some diagnostic traits to tell them apart. On the left here, we've got poison sumac, 
with. It's got these white, creamy fruits that hang in low bunches. Um, its leaves have some smooth margins, and it grows only in very wet soils. On the right here, we've got staghorn sumac, and uh, its fruits here, just from the pictures you can see, are different. They stand upright in tight bundles, and the leaves of staghorn sumac are serrated or sawtooth margins, and they can't tolerate very wet soils the way poison sumac can. Either way, considering how awful the rash associated with poison sumac is, it's probably better to just err on the side of caution if you're not sure and don't touch this plant. And that completes my presentation. Hope everybody enjoyed. These are my sources. Have a good one.